Arya, what's going on right now? Scanning. It appears that you are both time dilated and length contracted. Huh. Can you compensate? Compensating. Oh, okay. Much better. It's going to be a lot easier to have the following discussion when we're both in the same frame of reference. If you and I start disagreeing about where, when, how, what, why, when, who, what, where, well, things are going to start to get weird. Weird enough, in certain circumstances, to lead to paradoxes, which could melt your brain. But I promise you, if you stick with today's program about the specific paradox we're going to talk about, by the end of it, you will know a fundamental truth about the universe. So, let's begin. And Arya, just for fun, could you decompensate for a second? Oh, oh my hands, bro. Now entering the facility. Relativity is one of the most important ideas anyone has ever had. It's right up there with doctors should wash their hands, I think, and hey dude, why don't you put your pizza rolls in the air fryer? Theories of special and general relativity from Albert Einstein have that critical distinction of being both theoretically critical, modern physics doesn't work without it, and practically useful. For example, GPS would fail without relativistic math. But maybe most important about relativity is that it tells us something non-intuitive about the universe that no one had thought of before. Case in point, I present to you a paradox. Imagine that we have a barn. Approaching this barn is a ladder moving at near the speed of light. Don't ask me why. From the barn's perspective, our perspective right now, the instant the front of the ladder reaches the back of the barn, it fits inside. However, from the ladder's perspective, the barn is approaching it, and when it reaches the back of the barn, it's far too long to fit inside. Spoiler alert, relativity says both of these perspectives are correct. But how is that possible? This is called the ladder paradox, and resolving it is gonna take some serious brain power on our end. So grab your coffee, grab some colored pencils, and meet me in space. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Gamers! I'm award-winning science educator and inflated Ethan Hawke, Kyle Hill. You know, when I'm not sciencing, I'm trying to live my very best life. No, that doesn't just mean eating right and working out, but means acknowledging and taking care of the only muscle in your body that really matters. This one right here. Your brain is not a muscle. Shh. Get help that is better. Better help. BetterHelp is professional counseling done securely and with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log on to your account anytime to send the messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because you get access to financial aid. If you want to start living your very best life, if you want to start achieving your brain goals, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill for 10% off your first month. Look, I can't say it's for everyone, but it could be for you. Get help that is better. BetterHelp. To resolve our paradox, we must first truly understand what happens to space-time when you go really, really, really fast and close to the speed of light. The two great insights of Einstein's theories of relativity were, one, that the laws of physics are equal in equal reference frames. Equal reference frames like you and I moving at the same speed in the same direction right now in our kick-ass spaceships. The second insight was that the speed of light never changes. It is measured as equal in a vacuum in every possible reference frame. Whether you are in a spaceship or not, moving, not moving, spinning, which I hear is a good trick, and it's the second postulate where all this weirdness comes from. Now, I'm gonna say this as simply as possible, but not simpler. Because the speed of light never changes, different observers will observe different spaces and times. For example, Imagine that I have a laser clock on my spaceship. The laser fires a pulse, it reflects off a mirror, and then it comes back to indicate a tick on the clock. If both you and I aren't moving, or are moving at the same speed, we measure the same tick time. However, if you stay put and I start moving very quickly relative to you, you observe the path the laser pulse takes as longer, a diagonal zigzag as I've moved between pulse, reflection, and detection. 
If the speed of light is constant, as postulated by relativity, the only way for this longer distance over time to equal the same speed value is for time to be longer, for the moving clock to actually run slower. If the speed of light can't change, something else has to. This is time dilation, and it really does mean that if you were watching my ship speed past you and you looked at my watch, it would literally be ticking more slowly than your watch. And to correct for the fact that if I tip my laser clock sideways and fired a pulse from the back of my ship to the front, it would look like it is either too long or too short of a time, there is also length contraction, which literally compresses me, according to you, along my direction of motion. These two space and time effects in tandem ensure that the speed of light in a vacuum is measured as equal at different spaces and times. Are you still with me? Good, because now it's time to return to our paradox. To the kitchen table! Now that you have a better understanding of how time and space can change when you move relative to other things, it's time to get a little bit more hands-on with some good old-fashioned graph paper. Oh, oh, I haven't seen this stuff since college. How you doing, old friend? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry to... Yeah, a lot of us kind of had a, a rough couple of... Look, I'm not really <laughs> comfortable lending you money. <clears throat> I'm going to start by making a graph. The y-axis will be time, and the x-axis will be distance. It's a classic so-called Minkowski diagram of space-time. In normal space-time, our paradoxical barn will look like this. It has some distance across, front to back, and doesn't change position through time. And this would be the space-time of the light speed ladder entering the barn from the barn's perspective. Right here is when the ladder is inside the barn. Notice that this is what the barn considers simultaneous. The ladder and part of the barn the ladder is in all have the same time coordinate. But in our paradox, the ladder is moving very, very close to the speed of light, so much so that space-time warping is going to be a factor. So applying everything that we've learned today, the barn must be both space and time shifted relative to the ladder and vice versa. In a Minkowski diagram, we set the speed of light, a distance over time, to be at 45 degrees for simplicity. An object that is time dilated and length contracted will, from our perspective, cross more time and less distance as indicated by these shifted axes here, T prime and X prime. More time per R unit time and less distance per R unit distance. Now we are skipping a lot of math here, but let's just draw the shifted space time of our stationary barn and near light speed ladder. If we look at the moment the front of the ladder meets the back of the barn from the ladder's perspective and follow a line of simultaneity, time is shifted, remember? The back of the ladder no longer fits in the barn. The ladder fits and it doesn't. So which is the correct perspective? This is actually the solution to our paradox. Both perspectives are equally valid. This is called the relativity of simultaneity, a concept that solved the other paradoxes we've done on this program. From the latter's perspective, the barn has shrunk, and so it can't fit. From the barn's perspective, the latter has shrunk, and so it can fit. Both are equal. This is the fundamental truth of the universe I ask you to ponder today. Both here and now are relative concepts, which goes against our everyday understanding of life, which is why it's so important to wrap your head around it. Not only is the universe weirder than you think it is, it might be weirder than you can think it is. And the only way forward is science. Until next time. Decompensating. <laughs> now exiting the facility. 
Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to see episodes early, get access to our private Discord, get monthly members only live streams with me, not like that. Go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name in every single video right here. Aria, she loves showing them off. <laughs> and there's so many, I have no idea how I'm gonna. Now, you may think still that this time dilation stuff is, is very esoteric and it only happens you know, at the highest velocities, but in reality, it happens with everything. It's just not very noticeable, and you can actually physically test it. In 1971, the U.S. Naval Observatory took atomic clocks and put them on flights around the world in different directions, and when they came back, they measured a time dilation in those clocks relative to atomic clocks on the ground within 10% of relativistic math predictions. That is... So many people have tried to disprove Einstein at this point that it would make, it's the law of the land and the land is the universe. Thanks for watching. If you think you disproved Einstein and sent me an email about it, you didn't. <laughs>